there, Sandra here from Create in Spain and today I'm going to take you through the process of creating sentiments like this where you have one word within another or maybe you want something like a shape, maybe you want to curve your text a bit, those types of things. I'm going to be using shortcuts a lot to do that and then I'm going to tell you how you can get that file into your Canva software and how to actually cut them out with your scan and cut. So let's get going. Okay, so sentiments are very popular and they're also quite boring quite often. So this is a way of making your sentiments look a little more interesting. Now in Shortcuts a lot, it's very easy to do sentiments. You click on the text tab here. You can choose your fonts over here if you want to by scrolling up and down in that box there. Or you can go to the library and you can click on fonts and you can change your fonts in here and get the individual letters coming up so you can see what they look like. This one also has the option of choosing your fonts by name by letter, the ones that you used in the project, or indeed you can add fonts to your favourites list, which does tend to limit the number of fonts you have to scroll through. If you're looking for a particular type, then you might add them to your favourites. So I've got some text in here, very simple, happy birthday. But now, oh, I need to put my selection tool on instead. I'm going to select this and I'm going to go up to Effects and then I am going to go to Bridge Warp. Now this is a fun effect and you play with your offsets and you can distort your wording quite nicely. You can make it so that it's bigger in the centre or whatever. But what I want to do is to make it all curve up like that. Maybe make this a little bit, yeah, that'll do, that's fine. And then you could click on OK and it's all done for you. I advise that you play around with the effects when you're not doing anything important because you can do so many things that are great fun and they're very easy and they look like you spent a lot of time doing it and you really haven't, so I have that. Now, in this particular case, I want to add a heart to this one. I'm going to go into the library, go to the shapes and just pluck out a heart. We'll make it reasonably big and going to put it there. Yeah, OK. Now, right click on that. You can go to arrange and you can send it to the back, which is what I want it to do. And uh, now I can move it, actually I want to make it a bit bigger. There we go. I want to center it, so select it all, go over to the right hand side, and in this alignment mode, go to selection. I want to put it in the center that way, put it in the center that way. I actually want that to come down a bit, so if I click on my wording, just tap my keyboard, bring that down a bit. There we go. I think that will do fine. But I don't want to have just the text over the heart. I want it to cookie cutter stamp out of it. Now, one thing that I tend to try and remember to do, because it's useful, if you want to import this into Canvas, I don't know about other software, but certainly in Canvas, if you do not do this, you will find each of those letters is an individual little bit. Ugh absolutely horrendous. Now, first of all, I would go to path union because if I had any loose letters, it would join them up. But the fact that you've made the path a union path makes that all one object. It's no longer lots of little bits and pieces. That makes manipulating it, like hiding it, locking it, or whatever, a lot easier in other software. Once it's one piece, it's easier to maneuver. So I'm going to select my text again, I'm going to go up to edit, copy, edit. Now this is important, paste 
in place. Now, without doing anything else, I'm going to go straight up to Object and I'm going to lock it. Now, I'm going to select the entire lot. I'm going to go to Effects and I'm going to go to Knockout. Now, here is where I can choose the gap around my letters. And I generally go for 0.2 centimetres or 2 millimetres. And if you preview that, you can see what it will look like. I think that's great. I'm perfectly happy with that. So click OK. Now, if I were to try and move this at the moment, everything would go wrong because I have this locked. When I did the cookie cutting, what happened is one layer performed the cut and the other layer is now sitting in place. So I go to Object and Unlock. And now I can take these and I can group them and I can move it around wherever I wish. So that is basically what I want but I want to be able to cut around it without it going too close to all these letters, so I want an offset. So select it all again, go to Effects, go to the Shadow Layer slash Contour Cut, pick Outline Only, and I want this to be rounded, so I go for a rounded shadow there, and I want three millimeters. Okay, now you could do this as a print and cut outline if you want, that's fine. If you are doing, I think if you're doing a print and cut outline, it will only go around the outside. If you're doing a shadow layer, it will actually go inside the holes. Now let's have a look, see what the uh, image has done. So if I now pull this away, we can see that is just the outline. That's perfectly all right. You might want to check, depending on which setting that you've used, that you don't have holes in here that you don't want, or indeed that you get the holes that you want by using the shadow setting and not the just, not just the outline. Okay. So to line these up is very easy. Just select them both, click, to selection over here on the right and then like that they are lined up now because I have the print to cut function for my scan and cut all I need to do now is to export this as an SVG put it into canvas and I can cut it out directly as is but what if you don't have the scan and cut, print to cut card? Because if you live in the States, I gather you can't buy it there. I don't think you can get it in Australia. For some reason, it's available in Europe, or it was because I got mine over here, and it's available in the UK. For some reason, not available in a lot of places. So what if you want to do this without a lot of fuss, but you just don't have that print to cut card. Okay, so what I would do in this particular case, I would go backwards, just delete this. There we go. I would go to my effects, go to my shadow layer contour cut, do my outline. I would give it, instead of three, I would maybe take it up to five. Doesn't make much difference and I would click on OK there. Now, what you do is you print it off as is and scan it into your scan and cut machine. When you've got the information into the machine, you can do an edit which will allow you to put an interior offset on your cut, which will mean that this line will not show because it won't be there any longer. It'll be on the scrap from the paper or the card or whatever else it is that you've cut. This is what it looks like if you import your design into Canvas Workspace and you are using the print to cut function because it puts the registration marks on. If you're using Canvas Workspace and print and cut, 
then you import it into Canvas Workspace, it adds the registration marks, and then you print it. You can't print it from a shortcut slot first and then do it that way. It doesn't work that way. You have to import it and then do it. The other thing which is very important to do if you don't want anything to show is to click on the shapes which are your cuts and to switch those off before you do your print. And then of course, the other very, very important thing is to do the reverse of that and to hide all the text because it thinks that that is a cut line. Or alternatively, what you can do is you can select it and you can make that draw lines so that it won't try to cut it. When you send it to the cutter for the cut lines, you'll just be cutting the cut lines. The draw lines will be there, but you're not using them if you've done a print. So that's how to do a mix between using shortcut slot and canvas and or the SNC without canvas, depending on what you like to do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care now.